Bayern and Dortmund. A one-sided rivalry for the longest time. Things changed when Matarazzo's Beifau Bay won the league two seasons ago. So the Bavarians responded with Pep Guardiola. Please sit back, let us cook, and voila! Merci beaucoup! <laughs> Merci! This pair are again the strongest clubs in Germany after a few weird years, while we remain the third wheel. Bayern had Harry Kane moving further into midfield, allowing Mathis Tell and Vitor Roque more opportunities in the offensive third. Added with the free transfer from Pong and purchasing Vagoman from Stuttgart. They also kept stealing my youth academy players! I don't need it. I don't need it. They don't even have that much potential! And they stunned me on deadline day by purchasing Musa via his release clause. I've never been so blindsided. On Dortmund's end, Karim Adiemi is someone you all should know, but Benjamin Sheshko was bought from Munich last campaign, strengthening their offense. That's alongside Karim Kanate, giving them a pacey attack. Then there's their academy graduate, Max Alstite, who can find these guys and take chances for himself. Defensively, they aren't as good as Bayern, yet Real Walters was a dangerous option at right wing back. How do we respond? I like my starting 11, so I brought in some rotation options to push the starters. That wasn't Nathan Zeze from the left Poznan, although Sally Salihovic's pace provided an interesting option at left back. Emla Salman was an intriguing prospect from Turkey, whose under 21s won the Euros this past summer. Finally, I couldn't pass on Leonardo Hebeschini of Fluminense, who actually started on opening day because of preseason injuries, having them miss the start of the campaign, which on paper looked incredibly difficult. However, that turned into the greatest start ever. Onyekbuli's brace versus RB Leipzig was very promising, and our new Brazilian getting on the score sheet at Leverkusen made us look like a real threat. Another goal from the Brazilian versus Gladbach wasn't enough, but a returning Holdhouse grabbing a late winner was. It was important not to let the biggest embarrassment in my time at Schalke impact this season. With a somewhat easy Champions League schedule coming up, all I could think was more wins on the board. With 10 men, we only managed to draw a recently promoted Duisburg. Well, at least we got a penalty versus Ajax. Another draw. A tuna lead with Freiburg? and we concede the equalizer in the 87th minute. Making it worse, we drew Viking one all thanks to a 90 second minute goal from them. Bouncing back is the only thing we could do until we visited Pep Guardiola and lost our undefeated streak to them. Okay. Not due to Pep's beautiful football, but instead we decided to play short passes while suffocated by their press and Kovacevic did this and instantly regretted it. I play slightly more direct. Why are we doing this? All right, Bohum should be no problem. By the way, who's their manager? Damien Duff? Damien do it, make me laugh now. Ibernian insurance, pretty good. <laughs> yeah, very funny. Bohum have actually turned into a decent Bundesliga club, but at home, they should be dealt with. However, Valle decided to get himself sent off before half time. We were able to keep the score tied, but defending with 10 men proved too difficult by the end. What other whack jobs do we still have to get through? Ah, drawing Real Madrid, not too shabby. What about Mainz and Michelin? Well, that's not right. Oh. Even with December becoming a really good month, including a massive victory over Dortmund, moments like this Frankfurt equalizer left me irritated. I did sell Raychik to them, but he didn't do anything. Despite all those frustrations, we earned the most points we've ever received by the midway point, yet Bayern remained undefeated. Have mess in the past, have Haaland now, this is my success. An increase in transfer budget was given in January, which saw me find a proper right back cover in Simon Valde of Gladbach. It took nearly 30 million to bring him in, but it required more to sign Elijah Smith. An outstanding goalkeeper from Middlesbrough, he would play in the cup competitions while Urbig would play in the league. The second half of the season began brilliantly. Wins once again over Leipzig, Leverkusen, and Gladbach. Although the latter two were no longer impressive. That's due to them both in a relegation battle, where by the end, Gladbach actually got relegated. We kept winning, but had a slight tumble to Freiburg once again. A 1-0 loss happens, but let's look into the details. We leveled it up in the 65th minute, but it was ruled offside. Looking at it closely, 
It said Jung was the offender. Well, I guess there's nothing to argue then. VAR is always correct. The ball went to Wiper, and he was the one who put it in. If we look at it closely, Jung is offside, but Wiper wasn't. Jung does go towards the ball, but never touches it or interferes with a defender. So why was it called off? We later also had a huge chance to equalize, but an incredible stop was made by Montipo. Montipo. Ah uh, yes, I loaned him to Freiburg. Post game, I looked at his profile and saw I could recall him and send him to the second team. Nevertheless, even Bayern would fall into a rough run of form, which led to the title race becoming wide open. That was emphasized by defeating them in the league 2-1. Goals from our two Brazilians. A surprising win after conceding early, which put us above them in the table. However, Dorman in the Rook Runda hadn't lost a single game. It seems crazy and gets wilder when you realize they defeated the Bavarians at the Allianz. That hasn't happened since 2017 and not in the Bundesliga since Jurgen Klopp's final year in 2014. Although, they did lose once in Germany by this point in 2030. At Signal Duna Park, we faced Borussia Dortmund in the third round. An unfortunate draw, especially sandwiched between our fixtures with Leipzig and Leverkusen. Yet, we were looking great with Holthouse opening it up by rounding the keeper. Then, Karim Adeyemi would not let me relax, as he was found past our defense to smack one in tied at the half, but minutes into the restart, we had our other German striker, Nelson Wiper, giving us back the lead. Not long later, Ogawa made it 3. This was looking good, but a rare Jung mistake led to Adeyemi grabbing his brace. Thankfully, that's the closest they got, as we moved on to the quarterfinals. In the next round, it was Bayern. Are you taking the piss? Away from home too, and her form leading to this was brutal. This was our placement after we got Holland, and we were drawn with Benfica in the playoff round. Benfica got their European trophy years ago, when it should have been me, but despite some rotation defensively, I thought we were the favorites. It seemed so with an early goal from our boy Wiper. However, they sent a ball in behind to Marcos Leonardo, and it seemed like Elijah Smith was going to sweep it. Well, Grimal's right there. He can just kick it out. How did... Ooh, what the... How did both of you miss that? The defenders allowed him space for a second, leading to both center halves being subbed off. We were able to save base with an equalizer, and then a potential lifeline arrived. The man with the brace, Marcos Leonardo. Menino da Vila. Getting his marching orders. A whole half to find the advantage, but Elton had other plans. We just gave it to him, and he dribbled unopposed taking the lead for Benfica. We were unable to find another, losing at home to 10 men. And with me being desperate in the second leg, my team got absolutely smoked out of their house. I wasn't having a good time, and the two matches before Bayern and the DFB Pokal was my breaking point. We visited Damien Duff's Bochum and saw Oliver Sorek's terrible cross bounce off Pelletier's rear end, deflecting to Mursal. We equalized minutes later, but in the second half, Piccoli was found in behind, but Kovacevic was there to intercept. No, 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 no. Why this? No, this game! No, 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 no! What? Once again, we got an equalizer. Even so, I've long lost my sense of joy, especially since we didn't win. So, what happened versus Wolfsburg? Well, we actually got on board first and seemed to be creating the better chances. However, their defensive midfielder, with six finishing, somehow beat my goalkeeper from this wide angle at his near post. If it was Sergio Aguero, fine, I can somewhat understand, but Yoris Schotard doing this? Come on now. Then, the following. A pretty poor long ball was sent in, and my right-sided center back had more than enough of a lead to get there first. But he turns around and slows down as Wimmer blasts by and finds the winner. Mate, Margot Robbie ain't calling you. Why are you losing focus? We had a chance late to equalize, but missed this from a yard out. So the DFB Pokal quarterfinal versus Bayern was next. And we were receiving a pummeling with Tell scoring early with a far post header. They were getting closer and closer for another until minutes before the interval where Marrera grabbed that second. 
Yeah, we weren't stopping the fight. Holdhouse got through, but was stopped. The next 45 minutes roll around, and it stays quiet. No goals or real chances for us until the 90th minute, where Byron made a huge Three, mistake. Two, one. We'd hit the post with a final chance, as we got eliminated from the DFB Pokal. The standings in the Bundesliga placed us in third, 10 points behind Borussia with 7 matches left. I threw in the white flag, as we weren't catching up. Each half of the league contained 17 matches, and in the latter, they won 16 of them to clinch the shield with 84 points. That's tied for the most in this save. What's crazier, despite in my opinion them having an above average defense, their goalkeeper Kobel remains fantastic as he kept 12 clean sheets in those games. One less than what my keeper had in the entire campaign. I thought the yellow wall was falling off, but clearly I was wrong. We do have a young team and the players are developing. So I'm just waiting until this team explodes. However, my patience is growing thin and I might just have one more left in me. Da shit.